Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Would you turn to Mark's Gospel? I want to show you something real quick. In chapter 14, This is the, the last supper we call it, the last Passover Jesus ate. And this is just to, to tie in from the beginning of the message where Jesus knew where the donkey was. Jesus also knows where the room is, where they're supposed to have the meal. But do the disciples know where the room is? They don't even know anything. I mean, face it. John just gave, he, he, he flat out told on them. He said, we didn't understand these things the day it was going down. We, in fact, we didn't understand these things until Jesus was glorified. When was Jesus glorified? Well, first he died three days later. That's our Good Friday service this week. <laughs> then he rises from the dead. But then he appears to the saints for over 40 days and many convincing proofs before he gets taken up into heaven, before them. John says we didn't even get this till like 40 days later kind of thing. This is like... If you ever think you're slow in perceiving Christian things, don't worry, you're in a good club. The guys who were right there present didn't get it. But they didn't even know where to have the supper. And so Mark tells us this, verse 12, Mark 14, verse 12. On the first day of the unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was being sacrificed, his disciples said to him, where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of the disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and, and, and a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him. And wherever he enters, into, to, to that owner of that house, say to him, The teacher says, Where is my guest room in which I might eat the Passover with my disciples? And he himself will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Prepare the Passover for us there. The disciples, verse 16, then went out, came to the city, and guess what? They found it exactly as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. <coughs> well, you, you say, what's the big deal? Listen, in their culture, who carried the pitchers of water? The women. Jesus didn't want them to get, like, the wrong house, so he had to give them, like, a sign that they would not flub up. When they couldn't mess up on. He goes, you're going to go to the city, and when you get there, there's going to be a man carrying a pitcher of water. Not something real common. Got to make sure that we don't get to the wrong house. Guys, go, when you see the guy carrying the pitcher of water, follow him to the house. When you get to the house, say, the Lord says, you got an upper room. Wait a minute, does he know it's an upper room? He already knows it's there. But to make sure the disciples get to the right place, he gives them all the details. And you go tell him, and he'll show you the large upper room furnished and ready, and go prepare the meal there. And they went, and they found it exactly as he said. You guys, how good is God at telling us the details when we need to know? I mean, I don't know about your guys' faith, but sometimes we forget that the Lord is really good at his job. He, he's so good at, he is so good at making sure he's got, he knows all the details. Our problem is we don't always listen. You know, he's trying to tell us, go do this specifically, and we're like, uh, maybe I'll just do it my own way, or maybe, maybe I thought of that, you know, maybe. This, this is, and by the way, this is one of the most common questions I get. Well, how do you know when it's the Lord? Have any of you ever thought that? How do I know if this is the Lord or not? I can tell you how I know. He usually tells me to do stuff that I would not do on my own. You know, like in my own <coughs> groove that I'm doing my day, I'm thinking about doing whatever it is I got to do for my day. And then he goes, and see that person over there? Stop. Stop doing what you're doing and go over there and help them. And I'm like, I don't want to go help them. I got to do what I want to do. And I'm... I'm pretty certain I didn't come up with the idea of stopping and going and helping them because I really wasn't in that mode. Can anyone give an amen to this, that this happens? The Lord tells you sometimes stuff to do and you're going, huh, I wasn't really planning on that one. 
But if you listen to the Lord, He knows this very specific details. I mean, He can tell you to do something specifically. And when you do do what He says, later you find out, wow, He really knew what He was talking about. Now, who would volunteer to go find the upper room? You go, sure, that's easy. Just got to find the guy carrying a pitcher of water and follow him. No it's, not, it's not no grand theft. It's better than a donkey. Right? Two donkeys. I mean, they stole two donkeys. You read Matthew's gospel. They took two. But the upper room is just finding the upper room, getting the dinner ready, have the Passover. The Last Supper. But it says they found it exactly as he said. And only Mark tells us this detail. It's an interesting detail. That, that the Lord told them, this is how you're going to find the room. Now, he did tell in the other Gospels about having, get, having the Passover in the upper room. But they didn't get the specifics that they get to follow the guy with the pitcher of water. See, that's why I like to read all the Gospels. You get little, little things out of each one. You see little parts and you go. It, it's like having four different people tell you about the same day. You know, they all were at the parade. But... You know, one was on one side of the road, the other one was up the road, one was up in a tree. You know, from all the different perspectives, you get more juicy details about the day. This story, the longer I've had to spend time just mulling over the different, the different accounts, I think, what a day this day was. You know, but it was the day leading into this day. And the week leading up to this week that that really set the stage of why all those people were there. They wanted to see not Jesus only. John says they were there not for Jesus' sake only, but also that they might see Lazarus. See, some people forget that. They don't even tell that part about the story of the poem. How many of you heard that about Palm Sunday? That the folks were there not just to see Jesus. I'm not making this up. I, I hope you saw us right here in the, in the good book. It's there because... They were there because they wanted to see the guy who was dead for four days. And, <laughs> sorry, my daughter's over there going to John Robert, our little baby, so cute. They were there to see a guy who had died and come back to life. And Jesus had told his disciples, it was for your sakes that, I, that we're not there. It's so that you may believe, he said. Believe what? That you might believe that Jesus doesn't just take care of you when you're sick. He doesn't just take care of you when you're hungry. Jesus takes care of you even when you die. And if you believe in him, even if you die, you will live. And until you come to understand that, a lot of guys tell me, I don't get this story. I said, you know, they didn't get it either until he was glorified. And they saw him for who he really was. It says the heavens opened and he ascended and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went, oh, wait a minute. You know, you, you would say, Ooh, big revelation day, you know. Whoa, the guy we've been following is the son of God. Look, he's sitting down right at his right hand. They got to see that day. And then it says, then, bing, the light goes on. John goes, oh, now I get it. Sometimes we need that. That moment of seeing Jesus for who he really is, the Son of God seated at the right hand of God before everything else comes into focus. Bef you know, you might have friends going, I don't get this whole Jesus thing you're into. Listen, the disciples didn't understand either. And sometimes we have no patience for other people. If they don't understand, we're like, hey man, why aren't you at my place of understanding? I don't understand. Oh, you're, you're an idiot. Well, it's because they don't know Jesus Glorified that. And it, it, it's once you understand, you see him glorified, then it says, well, that's when they began to understand the things which were written about him. That whole thing about Zechariah 9 9, that Psalm 118. All of a sudden, once they understood who he was, then the other scriptures began to open up in their understanding. But now we get what that was all about. But see, before that, they didn't get it. And sometimes Christians are really harsh on other Christians that don't get it. And I'm like, hey, did we all start off knowing this stuff? Well, I, I didn't. I mean, I'm just learning every day. I learn more every day. So if someone else doesn't understand, I just go, hey, 
Maybe they haven't found out that he's glorified yet. Maybe they don't understand he's seated at the right hand of God. When that understanding comes to their mind and that, that, that revelation of who he is, that it goes from being information about God to illumination in the spiritual realm. When you actually understand, how many know Jesus sits at the right hand of God right now? He's seated in the seat of authority. That's the, the we, we call that the power seat to be at the right hand of, the, of God Almighty. That's, that's his right hand. That's where Jesus is seated. When you start with that understanding, that, that's a revelation. When you get that revelation, all of a sudden, all of these things that are mysterious verses in the Bible that made no sense, why would they call him king of Israel? And why would the king of Israel come on a donkey's, a colt? You know, he could have had a stallion. He could have an army. No, he comes in humbly. Why? Why would he come so humbly into Jerusalem? Why do you think he did that? I mean, he's a king of all kings. See, we think of kings as the guy who's going to rule and crush and do it, you know, and he comes in all humble. It says, anyone that's weary, anyone that has a heavy burden, he says, come to me. He invites them, come to me and I'll give you rest. You, you need rest for your soul? Come here. I'm the king. And he's the only one I can tell you that really gives you peace in your soul when you come to Jesus. And if you don't have that peace, and you, you, you're thinking, I don't know about that, what you're talking about. Let me invite you to go to him. Just go to him and say, look, if you're really who this preacher says you are, I need to come to you. And if you don't get this stuff that I'm talking about, don't worry. The disciples didn't get it yet either. But I invite you to come to Jesus so that your eyes can be illuminated in his light. Because he, remember in that psalm it says that he was the light? Psalm 118, don't forget that one, what we started with. He was the light. That light is the light that shows us the true path. And that's what Jesus came to be, the light of the world. So he came to show us this stuff. And some people go, wow, wow. Also, I love, I love it when the light comes on. You know, sometimes I'm sharing stuff about the Lord and they go, and I can see the reaction on the face. Wow, I did never see it. That's a fun day. I hope every day gets to be like that for you, that you get to see things about the Lord and you go, wow, the Lord is so cool and he's so real and he provides and he knows where the provisions are. He knows where the room is. He knows where the donkeys stay. He knows what to say when you're taking the donkey. He knows how to get the stuff. I mean, he knows everything. He knows how to take care of us when we're sick. He even knows how to take care of us when we're dead. Amen? Amen. That's the point of Palm Sunday to me. Jesus doesn't just do sick. Jesus does dead. He does dead. If, and when, when you come to understand that, all of a sudden, everything that you were worried about, all them big problems, right? The, the stuff that you got to figure out for building the house and all the details, it becomes so, like, yeah, little, he said. It's just, it puts it in perspective. So may God help you to gain that perspective this week. May you have a wonderful week in the Lord as we get ready to celebrate this next week, Resurrection Sunday. You know, this Friday, that we call Good Friday because it's good because he died for us. Not good for him. I, I feel, tell you, how many of you watched The Passion of Christ, that movie that they did, that Mel Gibson directed? That one, I, I watched that and just, oh, I hate seeing them beat him. It just hurts my heart, like, but he was good, and, he, and they beat him for no reason. He, he, he could have picked a bad guy to beat, like me, that would have been fair, but he didn't do anything. What? The robber yeah, the robber said the very same thing. We deserve what we're getting here on the cross. He didn't do anything wrong. But see, that one thief said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, today, this day, you'll be in paradise with me. What a beautiful thing. Well, we'll celebrate that next week. And I'm not trying to get ahead of myself in the story. But next week, if you have any friends that haven't heard the resurrection story, please. You know, sometimes people at this time of year, it's the... I call it the, the once, or, once or twice or a year's attenders. They go to church always Christmas and Easter, even if they don't always believe, but they'll go. Would you do me a favor and invite them to come next week 
And it, it, if they'll go to sunrise service, there's our sunrise service with all the churches at the end of the runway there in the baseball field. But if not, you want to sleep in and get them here, just come, come out here. You can bring them for the breakfast at 8.30 if you want or 9 o'clock for our service. And, uh, and we'll do the resurrection message in a way, hopefully, that'll like, you know, give them that, that understanding they need of who Jesus really is. I mean, without the resurrection, this whole thing is foolishness, the Bible says. If Christ had not risen from the dead, we would be most to be pitied, the Bible says. But did Christ rise? Next week, I'm going to start off the service. He is risen. He is and what do you say? He is risen indeed. That's right. Hallelujah. We'll go Pentecostal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so next week, just practicing. <coughs> One more time. He is risen. <coughs> and risen indeed. Hallelujah. Don't forget the hallelujah. Okay. We'll do that next week. And, it, and we'll celebrate the Lord's resurrection. And if you've got friends, some of you have friends that you've been wanting to bring to church. Try it. Just be bold and say, hey man, come out. You've got to hear this part. We learned about another guy that they went to see. Do you know about the other guy they went to see on Palm Sunday? You throw that at like a teaser, you know. To tell I'm not telling you the answer. You've got to read. No. <laughs> no, you can tell him. You can tell him. Tell him and say, come on out. Let's hear the story about Christ, what he did for us. Because this is really the whole power of the gospel comes down to next Sunday's message. It is, it, to me, it is the ultimate part of getting to share God's word is what I get to share with you next week. Best ever topic that there is. Christ rose from the dead. Without it, we'd be, we'd be stupid to be Christians. We'd be lost. But he did it. He did it right. So we don't, we're not lost. We're in his light. And some folks just, they just need an invitation to come to that light. It's such a simple thing. You came already, so you're like, I'm good. But think about the days when you weren't good and you needed someone to just say, hey, man, come on. Just, just a little nudge, just a little uh, invit. All they need is an invitation. Don't drag them and beat them and get them. You're coming to church with me when you want to or not. Don't, don't, please don't do that. They're not going to hear a word I say. But tell them you got something really, really good. I mean, super good for their soul to hear. Something really that brings life and light and hope to their heart. Tell them what the gospel, gospel, what does it mean translate to? Gospel translates to two words, what in English? Good news. Don't you dare say to your friends, you got to come to church. You're screwed up and you need to get it fixed. <laughs> it might be true. But what you need to say is, I got some really good news for you. Please come and hear the good news. <coughs> There's enough bad news. They're getting it bombarded on every social media thing there is. Bad news, bad news, bad news. You got to tell your friends, we got the best news of your entire life. Come hear the, the message next week. Bring your friends and let some... If you don't mind, you see all these rubber made chairs? We set them all up so they could be full, not so they could just sit here and sit on the sand with nobody sitting in them. So bring me a lot of people to share the good news with. And even if you're not bold, you don't, you're like, I can't do that, Pastor. I'll do it. Just you get them here. Just invite them. Maybe you got to bait them. We'll go to lunch after or something. Or, or there's a breakfast before. You can come and have breakfast, you know? <laughs> What do we have in chili? <coughs> chili. <laughs> and, and, and rice and hot dogs. <laughs> oh, we're going big time. So come out next week. Bring your friends. Breakfast is at 8.30. Service at 9. Sorry we got a little late start today, but it was still worth it. I love it. And thanks, Lord, for keeping back the rain. Let's put this stuff away in just a minute here. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for these sweet things of your holy scriptures that, that point out things of understanding for our faith to get strengthened in. I pray, Lord, that anyone that listens to this message, the, the ports, Lord, that you want to bury into their heart, they would just sink in into good soil and they, they would just grow there into a really fruitful crop in their faith. They would, they would have an abundance of faith grow, springing up because they hear of what you did and your ability to provide, your ability to direct, Lord. Help us be mindful of that this week. As we go into this week, we celebrate the gift that you gave of your son to die on that cross for us. 
Lord Jesus, thank you for dying in our half. We, we give you praise. You deserve all the praise. And we say, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Save us now, Lord. Save all who call upon you. We ask it together in Jesus' name. And everyone that agree with me said, Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me? Let's... Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.